Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. I am just going to show you real quick how to finish these up. I don't think I actually finished up the video. We've had um, a couple of deaths in our family and um, a concussion with one of my children from sports. So amidst other things. So anyway, um, it's just been hectic. So I'm sorry about taking so long to come back and finish. But this was the painting we were shooting for or something similar because you can put your own spin on it. Some of my students wanted to do it like they were laying in the grass. Um, so this is another example of how to do that. And so I just figured I would show you guys how to finish these up. Um, sometimes as you let it dry, if you're using washi tape especially, it'll come back up. So before you go back and start in again, you want to smooth your tape back down. And uh, then you want to finish it up. One of the things I was showing them is I showed them how to use a fan brush to create uh, this flicking, um, to create grasses. And, and basically you're just using your fan brush. I don't think I have one of my fan brushes out. I'm sorry guys. I'll get it out while we're talking, but but it's good to use a flicking motion so that more weight goes on at the bottom of each blade and less weight at the top because you want the grass to get thinner, just like we've talked about with trees and everything else. As it gets further away from the root, it gets thinner. And so here's like a fan brush um, you can use, and uh, you would just, you know, flick flicking motions like this so that you're keeping it light, okay? Um, it doesn't need to be straight up and down. Most grass kind of grows at different angles, especially because the grass is going to run into each other. There's broken grass. And so these are things that at the end here, after ever they've done their flicking motion to get the grass, is we're going to add in these little punches of weeds and stuff like that. So if I was going to get some black paint, I'll show you a couple examples, is I will, once I make sure, what have we talked about? Juicy paint, right? This is not my favorite thing to use for a palette, but I figured I'd show you like a tray works. Um, you can get a, a white plate out, that'll work, and stuff like that. I would caution you if it's a white plate, get it from the dollar store. Um, if you're using more expensive paints, um, you don't want to use your dinner plates that you're eating off of because of one of some of the chemicals in the paints. So anyway, so again, I'm going to have more pressure at the bottom, and then I'm going to release upward like this. So that I'm getting these smaller ones. Um, one of the things I talk to my students about is that as you're painting, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll see if I can get it to really focus in. Right here, you can see these kind of scratch marks. They almost look like crayon or chalk does where it just catches the grit of the paper. That means that probably your brush is too dry. Absolutely, it's too dry actually. And you just need to get your paint a little bit juicier with pigment and water, okay? And since these are silhouettes, we're trying to go for um, a little bit more opaque than we probably would normally. And um, But it's okay that some are lighter than others, okay? We don't need it all like completely flat black. Um, and so I'm just going to add in some of these. And then another thing you want to do is create some that have some character. So maybe you got some that have a little bit of a break to them. Uh, stuff like that. So some are thicker because they're closer, right? Things are close up. They're bigger. So it's okay to have some of the bigger ones in there. Um, it helps with the perspective of the painting to have some thin ones in the back with your first layer and then as you come in again once that's dry. And again, if you want to dry something quickly, get that blow dryer out, man. Those blow dryers are handy. Alright, so I did put in most of it with the fan brush and now I'm coming back in with my paintbrush really lightly. And if you need to practice, grab some scrap sheets of copy paper and just kind of practice flicking um this kind of motion so that you can kind of get these now i got too dry there so it means i need more there we go i want some of these to have some big loopies all right have fun this is grass it's not a big deal it's not something to stress out about again art's supposed to be relaxing so it's okay if some of these are bigger. Like, look how big that one is. No big deal. It's fun. I can put in a few more just to make sure it's not alone. It's not the only thick one. 
Um, the other thing I, I caution my students with is as you finish this up, if you have like some gaps that are really low where the ground should be uh, more opaque, you can always come back in with some really dark black towards those edges to kind of firm that up. Okay. Now the other thing I told them to do, and you can kind of see them, is grass is not just all grass. It's like, if, especially if it's a weedy kind of grass, so it's going to have little wheat heads. So throw in some little things, some little like flower, wildflower kind of shapies. I don't know why I start saying words that aren't really words. Shapey is not a word. But if you throw in these extra little zings here of shape, like see, that's not a real shape. It's like a weird shape, but that's how nature is. Sometimes our little wildflowers are starting to bud out and they look kind of funky. That's okay. Wheat heads, I just do little uh, dots really lightly and I try to get smaller as I go up. Just have fun. Okay. And so you just do that. Um, some people wanted to add stars in. Uh, if you made it up to the top of your sky and you have some blue, um, and then... I would go for that if your sky stayed pretty red or pink, depending on what colors you decided to do. You might not want to do that, but we can drop in definitely some white. So I'll show you some things you can do. You can either use like a gel pen and kind of go in and dot it in. Um, I've done that before, but you can also uh, get a hold of your, if you have some paint that came with a white or if you have some acrylic paint, um, even like the crafting paint, that'll work. And you just squeeze out some white. That would probably work better than this. This is probably not going to be opaque enough because this is actually like a watercolor from our Lucas set. Which I just had to open for the first time because you guys see how often I use white paint. I don't. <laughs> With watercolor. So I'm just really going to get this as opaque as I can and load it up on my brush. I don't want it too wet because then it'll just come out. So I'm going to try a little tiny dot that you can see in the dark area. If it's opaque enough, yeah. Alright, so there we go. And then you can just kind of flick it. And get some scars. I'm trying to keep mine up high because they would just be peeking out. And all I'm doing is hitting the brush onto my finger. Um, some people like the flick where you do this with the brush. That works best for you. Depends on what brush I have. Sometimes I'm doing the little flick thing with my finger. And right now I'm just going to do this. And that gives me that starry effect, which I kind of like. And there, I like the splatter version because sometimes we get too orderly and then it doesn't look like stars anymore because we're doing it so evenly spaced out. So if you guys can see, hopefully it's focusing. There you go. If you want to add in some stars, you can even, if you want to, add some bigger ones. But I like these little flicky ones because it's sunset, so... Oops, see? And also, things happen. Alright, got it? That is pretty much how you finish these up. Um, this is one I wanted to show you. That is not my favorite. And it's called overworking. So we've talked about that before, where you keep going over and over and over again on your paint, on your paper, and you overwork it. And so I wanted to show it to you, because it happens to me too. So I wanted to correct something in here. I'd done too much lifting on some clouds. I love, like, actually, legitimately, I love this top half right here. I was demoing some palm trees. I love this part. I love how I just, I let it go. I just let the water bleed in while, because we were doing that wet on wet technique. And I love the way that these clouds seem so wispy. So this is a good example of what to do, where you're letting the watercolors and you're letting the paper do what it should do. And then here's the example of what not to do, which is what I then did, because I came back to it and I thought, oh, I really want to make this a little better. But actually I made it worse and I should have just left it alone. But it happens to all of us. And I, I tried to add in some more pops of our magenta color. And in doing so, I didn't like it. And then I tried to lift it again. Anyway, I overworked it. So when we talk about overworking it, this is that example. Now it actually isn't that bad in 
honestly, I could just still paint a sunset scene over it and it'll look okay. It's just that I know what I did. I know I overworked it. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys that it happens to everybody. So it's okay. Don't beat yourself up if it happens to you. If you have a nice paper though, if you do ever start buying some B paper arches, the kind of fun thing is to cut it down and you can use both sides. So I was demoing how to do some palm trees on this. Um, but the nice thing is that even if I decide I really don't like this, I can flip this paper over and paint it on the back and do a new painting. So that's kind of a lovely thing. Anyway, so I just wanted to cover that so you guys could finish out your sunsets and enjoy uh, your paintings. And I can't wait to see your paintings finished. The ones that were finished in class turned out really well. Like, I totally enjoyed it. I love seeing everybody's different styles. Um, I love seeing the different ways that people decide to paint. Some are lighter painters, some are heavier. Um, some painted palm trees, some did grasses, some did uh, all of the above with types of trees. It was just so much fun to see the finished works. And um, I did get some pics, I'm pretty sure, so maybe I can put them in this video so you guys can see the different pics of the students' work. But you guys did great, and I'm really, really pumped. So that's it for this one, and I will come back again because I'm going to be talking about our monochromatic studies that we just started in class and um, I'm going to cover again how to start those. I'm actually going to add in a little thing we didn't do in class with some tape too. So, all right. I will see you guys. Hang in there. Keep doing art.